Our research focuses on understanding the genetic determinants of lung health and lung disease. In particular, the lung disease that is referred to as COPD, or chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. The COPD is a very important disease because it affects over 900,000 people in the UK. It significantly impairs the quality of life of many people, particularly in their early years in retirement. Um, and we know quite a bit about the causes of COPD, in particular about the role of uh, tobacco. Smoking is an important cause of COPD, but not all smokers are equally susceptible to developing disease. And that's one of the things that indicates that genetic factors are also important. And why do we want to understand the genetic mechanisms that underpin lung health and the development of COPD? Well, if we can understand more about the mechanisms involved, the biological pathways and the molecules involved in developing disease, then that knowledge can help us in the development of new medicines. Um, because at the moment, for COPD, we have various medicines that can help with various aspects of the disease, but nothing that truly alters the course of the disease uh, other than stopping smoking. Uh, and it would be uh, a great benefit, I think, to the very many patients who have COPD if we were able to improve future treatment and potentially also prevention of disease to prevent lung uh, health deteriorating quite so rapidly. To design our research study, we actually decided to start with studying the determinants of lung health rather than simply focusing only on individuals who were diseased, because COPD is an endpoint uh, which is reached after many years of declining lung function. So we actually set out to study the genetic determinants of lung function in very, very many healthy individuals. So we initially brought together scientists from many institutions to enable us to study over 20,000 people. And by studying over two and a half million genetic variants across each of those individuals in the study, we were able to assess which of those genetic variants actually were associated with higher or lower lung function measures. And the clues that we were able to pick up from, the, from those studies ena enabled us subsequently to assess which of those variants were also associated with the disease, COPD. The main reason that we're undertaking this research is to understand about the molecular mechanisms of the development of COPD so that we can develop improved prevention and improved treatment that does take time and we need to understand how some of these genetic variants are influencing the risk of disease. One more potentially immediate application of uh, this kind of knowledge could be for disease risk prediction. And in this case we know for example that if we put together the first tranche of uh, six genetic variants that were discovered um, for, that are predictive of, of lung function and we look at how they might influence the risk of COPD, we can define a group of individuals who carry more risk variants than others. And they are at 1.6 times the risk of developing COPD than individuals who have an average number of risk variants, for example. That doesn't sound like a very big increase, and for example, it's not as large an increase as one might find if one smokes. But if you put that information together, with information on whether or not um, a, a patient smokes. Then, for example, if you're looking at somebody who's middle-aged at the moment uh, and making a decision about whether or not they quit smoking or, or carry on smoking, um, if they are able to quit smoking in middle age, then they can very much lessen their risk of developing COPD. Whereas a, a, a smoker in middle age who carries on smoking until around the age of 65, for example. If they're in that higher genetic risk category, actually around 59 out of 100 of those people will develop COPD. So actually that's an important qualitative difference. And we're also interested in looking at 
how people receive that kind of information, particularly people attending smoking cessation uh, programs, for example, who are often very motivated to quit, but quitting smoking is a very difficult thing to do.